let's talk more about this podcast, which is about mental illness. And this one is important because the burden is massive, massive. I mean, for the last few years, it has been felt that depression is the single leading cause of loss of quality of life of humans on the planet. I believe that there are over 322 million people diagnosed, and that was in 2015 or 2017. I'm sure that there's over 400 million people who were just diagnosed with depression in the world. And I'm, there's probably over a billion people when you think about people who are not actually getting treatment for their depression or getting this diagnosed, a billion people potentially, like a massive portion, a massive portion of the population is having depressive illness. What is depressive illness? Well, like I said, the mainstream medical system will treat this as a neurotransmitter issue, but I don't think that's the proximate cause. I think there's something else going on. I'm going to talk about that in this podcast, and that is neuroinflammation. The immune system in the brain is activated. Depression, anxiety, bipolar, psychotic disorders, schizophrenia, and even eating disorders, I believe, anorexia and bulimia, are likely to have at least some significant connection. A significant portion of the etiology there is neuroinflammation, which means you could really characterize these as an autoimmune disease, as a disease of the immune system in the brain turning against itself. So the question for this podcast becomes, why is the immune system doing that? I will get to that at the end of this podcast. If you want a preview of that, I think that it probably has to do with the gut and that there are things that are irritating the gut. And we will talk in this podcast, things like lectins, potentially plant toxins are irritating the gut and driving that. Are you saying, Paul, that the food we eat could cause depression, anxiety, eating disorders? That's exactly what I'm postulating. That's the hypothesis I am advancing here. We will dig into all of the details in this podcast. And at the end of the podcast, I've included a short interview with Meg Chatham who is a, an incredible woman who came to the Animal Based Gathering here in Santa Teresa. While she was in Santa Teresa for the Animal Based Gathering, I heard part of her story about having anorexia. She tells that story at the end of the podcast. We did a short interview, and then she talks about what interventions have been helpful for her and how eating an animal-based diet has been helpful for her, something that the mainstream medical establishment would call restrictive and would argue against or would argue something like an animal-based diet might cause an eating disorder, when in fact, this is really helping her significantly. This is such an important point to drive home, guys. I do not believe that an intentional diet like an animal-based diet that is intentionally moving out some foods or eliminating some foods that could be harmful to humans. I don't believe that is restrictive. I see it as intentional and powerful. It's a powerful lever. And what if that type of diet, this is the question I'm asking. This is the hypothesis that I am fascinated by. What if that type of diet could improve neuroinflammation in the brain and could help these mental health disorders where not a whole lot else helps a lot at all because we don't have good treatments for these, right? This is the problem. Depression, and anxiety, the treatments are horrible. Uh, they have some efficacy perhaps, but we know they have many side effects. Eating disorders have no pharmaceutical treatment. The treatments are not that helpful. Many people relapse. Many people continue to suffer, as I talked about earlier. And that is why I am doing this, I'm not doing it to make it unfun in life. If you guys follow any of my stuff outside of my podcast, you know that I like to have a lot of fun in my life. Before I get into some of the literature that I wanted to review in this podcast, I wanted to also talk about a concept that I first discussed in my book, The Carnivore Code. And this is the concept of what I called the Plinko effect. Plinko is a game in, what was it in? Price is Right, where you had a disc on a slanted board. The slanted board had a bunch of pins in it and you drop the disc. I always thought it was kind of interesting visually to watch the disc stochastically randomly go through all these little pins on the board and end up in a slot at the bottom. Obviously the contestants would, would try and position the disc at the top of the board to end up in a in a slot at the bottom with the most amount of money or the free car or the free house or whatever. But you can't tell how, where it's going to go because these pins are positioned uh, throughout the board and it's stochastic. You don't really know exactly where the disc is going to fall at every one of those points. And my attempt, my intention in the book was to relate this to illness, chronic illness in humans. Why do some people get eczema like me or psoriasis or lupus? Why do some people get Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Why do other people get Sjogren's disease? Why do other people get whatever autoimmune disease you pick? Multiple sclerosis. Why do some people get um, dry eyes? Why do some people get depression and anxiety, which I would characterize as neurological autoimmune diseases? Why do some people get eating disorders and not others? This, I think, is a key concept that Western medicine is missing, that we all have chinks in our armor. We all have our weaknesses. We all have our Achilles heel. And when we get out of line, when we do things that are evolutionarily inconsistent, and that I think is the key here, when we do things in our diet, in our life, whether it's not enough sun, not enough sleep, messing up the circadian rhythm, exposure to toxins, eating foods that are evolutionarily inconsistent, then that Achilles heel is manifest, is amplified. For me, it seems to be eczema. That is where 
my body demonstrates or shows me that I have something out of balance, whether it's inflammation in some way, shape or form. I ate some food. I did something. It's eczema. As a kid, it was asthma too. Thankfully, that's not a big deal for me. I don't get much eczema, if any, anymore uh, since changing my diet, which is one of the things that got me interested in this in the first place. And there are many similar stories to mine with elimination type diets, with intentional type diets that would be considered restrictive or something by the mainstream, but I think are quite powerful in this way if we really believe that these food can be such massive levers for us at the level of the gut and potentially at the level of autoimmunity more broadly. 